Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kara, and today I'm going to be sharing with you the top five first time home buyer mistakes. I quickly want to mention before I hop into this video that I recently completed my Asheville Home Buyer Guide, which is an 11 page PDF that shows you step by step the home buying process from start to finish. So it's completely free. And if you would like a copy of it, I will leave my contact information in the description box below, as well as at the end of this video. Definitely reach out to me at any time and I will be happy to send you over a copy of that. Mistake number one is looking for a home before you apply for a mortgage. So this isn't the best idea for a few different reasons. One of them being, you can't make an offer on a home unless you have a pre-qualification letter or a pre-approval letter from a lender. I'll quickly tell you the difference between those two things. So a pre-qualification letter is step one. This is where you talk to your lender, they look at your income, your debts, your credit score, and basically a high level overview of your current situation and give you an estimate of what you are likely able to afford. A pre-approval letter is more intensive, there's much more paperwork, and it's ultimately where a lender says, yes, you are absolutely able to get a mortgage for this amount. So I always recommend, of course, before you start looking at houses, you want to know what kind of house you can afford. It's not the best idea to start looking at homes and then later find out that you can't even afford a home that you ended up falling in love with. So step one is always get pre-qualified. Talk to a lender, see what you're able to afford, and talk to them about their different home buying programs as well. Sometimes lenders offer closing cost assistance and just different programs that might be of interest to you. There are also a lot of different types of loans that are good to know about. So of course there's conventional loans, FHA, VA, USDA. There's a lot of different ones. And I myself am not a mortgage broker or a mortgage lender, but I can of course recommend some to you that are local to the Asheville area if that is something that you are needing. Mistake number two ties into mistake number one, and that is not using a local lender. So from personal experience, I haven't found that using a big lender is really the best situation for my buyers. I always recommend that they use a local lender. There's nothing saying that you can't use a bigger lender, like a bank, for example, but I just haven't had the best luck with them. So what I mean by this is I've had some buyers in the past say, oh, well, I already have a bank account with this bank. Let me just use them for my mortgage as well. Unfortunately, what ends up happening is that these banks aren't local to that area, even though there might be a branch in Asheville, for example, they're focusing on borrowers all across the country. So they're not specific to that area. They're not aware of the local laws, what homes are selling for, and there tend to be appraisal problems, communication issues, as well as settlement delays. There's really not a benefit to using one of those types of lenders over a local lender. Mistake number three is not shopping out interest rates. So just like if you were going to buy a new car or a big appliance or something like that, you would likely look online at a few different places or maybe drive around and see what prices different businesses offer. So it's the same type of thing with, with interest rates. I always recommend talking to a few different lenders and seeing what type of programs each lender offers and what the whole package looks like. So of course, interest rate is not the only aspect that you want to look at when getting a mortgage. That is one piece of it, but it is a pretty big piece seeing as you're going to have this loan likely over a 30 year time frame. Something that people don't often know as well is that let's say you really like this one lender, you really get along with them, but they have a slightly higher interest rate than another lender that you were talking to. You can actually, in some cases, talk to that lender who you really enjoy working with and say, hey, I found a lower rate through this other company. Is there any way that you can match it or can we find some way to get my monthly payment down to that amount, for example? And a lot of times they're able to work with you and find a good solution for that. 
You'll also want to pay attention to any added fees that the lender might have as well because that differs from lender to lender and that can definitely rack up your costs as well. Mistake number four is not separating your wants from your needs. So I see this a lot where people will say, well, I really want this and I really want this in a home and I really want a fireplace and I really want a pool and I really want four bedrooms and whatever it is. But the thing is, sometimes people can actually overlook a home that could be perfect for them because they're so focused on the wants. So if you separate your wants from your needs and you say, okay, I need a three bedroom home, it needs to have two baths, and you know, I would love a fireplace or I would love a finished basement or I would love a fenced in yard, for example, then if you start looking at homes that have at least the bare minimum, they at least have your needs, but they have the ability to create your wants. So maybe there's a big yard with no fence or a basement that's not finished yet, but you can make them that way, then that could be a perfect opportunity to put in a little bit of sweat equity and even make some money whenever you plan to sell that property. Mistake number five is not setting a proper budget for yourself. So as I mentioned in the first mistake, you definitely need to talk to a mortgage lender to figure out what your overall budget is. But there's a little bit more to it than that because that's just gonna tell you what your monthly payment is for your mortgage. Of course, on top of that, there are utility costs, maybe there are renovations you're going to wanna do, and you need to just consider all of the pieces of the puzzle before diving into purchasing a new home. I always recommend to people, it's okay if you wanna take a little bit out of your savings, but you wanna keep a good ratio. You wanna make sure that you have a certain rainy day fund so that when you move into your home, let's say your AC breaks and you need to buy a new AC, then you need to have the money to be able to do that. You don't wanna use every penny that you have to purchase your new home. Another thing that I would like to add to this as well is that if you are considering doing renovations to your home, try to get estimates for this either before you go under agreement or after you go under agreement during your due diligence period, but definitely before you purchase the home. So let's say you were thinking of renovating the kitchen and opening up a wall and adding more counter space and cabinets and whatever you want to do. Let's say you thought it was going to be $20,000 but the contractor is actually saying it's going to be $50,000. This is definitely something that you're going to want to take into consideration before signing on the dotted line and purchasing that property. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. I am more than happy to do a part two of this if you would like. Definitely hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment. Let me know if you found any of these tips in particular helpful to you in some way. And don't forget, as I mentioned earlier in the video, that I did complete that Asheville home buyer guide. If you would like a step-by-step -step breakdown of the home buyer process, just reach out to me and I will be happy to send that over to you. Again, it is completely free, no pressure, but it's a really great educational um, piece for you. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely let me know. But that is everything for today, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and share this with anyone that you think might be interested in this type of content as well. And I will see you guys very soon in the next one.